<laughs> Today we dine on the lore. And overanalyze every little thing because that's a fantastic idea. I am hyped. Okay, so uh, first off, I want to say sorry I couldn't do this as a live reaction. I just don't have the internet to be able to make that kind of experience even remotely enjoyable for anyone. But man, I've watched this trailer so many times and I have a lot of thoughts. So uh, let's get right into it, shall we? Repeat after me. Three, two, one, one, two, three. All right, so first off, I've changed my opinion slightly on Yai. I think she's another Ningguang for me, in the sense that I feel like she's not as suspicious as I originally thought. Uh, the trailer starts with her waking us up, or at least what I'm assuming is us, and for the very first time, her expression doesn't look like she's uh, sizing us up. It actually seems like she's trying to help us. I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but there is a part in the trailer where we, as the Traveler, seem to either fall asleep or pass out. I do wonder if Yai will be the one to save us in that situation, you know, kind of like how Toma saved us from Ball. Anyway. <sighs> you know, the earliest shrine on Watatsumi Island was not located in Sangonomiya. But after she struck down our protector deity, the shrine was abandoned. Kokomi is one of those characters that's a little hard to get a good read on, but I do think she's a character of integrity, you know, like with good intentions. She talks about Ball striking down her people's protector deity, Orobashi, but I'm not really sure that she's at all motivated by anything like revenge. That was a really, really long time ago, and I kind of feel like her people have had enough time to heal and, you know, just cope. Now, in the live stream, there's also a mention that it was during the battle with Orobashi that the Raiden Shogun lost something really important to her. It's also mentioned in Kokomi's little bio blurb that they show later on that the current heir of the bloodline, so Kokomi, can inherit the will of a god in a mortal's body. I'm guessing that the god would be Orobashi, because that's logical. I think it's really interesting that they use the word will here and not responsibility or duty. The latter would imply that Kokomi is literally responsible for the well-being of her people, but the former makes me wonder if she inherited Orobashi's um, ambition, or, you know, something like it. Vision-like, you know? If she did, that might mean that she knows a lot more about what happened that day when the two gods fought than anyone else does. We might be able to use that for something later on. Recently, some of our soldiers started showing symptoms of accelerated aging. If that's the case, then the peace talks are likely a trap. Okay, uh, two things here. Uh, first, accelerated aging is a really, really weird thing to have happen at random, but I also don't think it is random. Uh, you see, Watatsumi Island is named after a sea deity in Japan, which is also sometimes called Ryujin, and he's got several myths attached to him. Uh, one of the more popular ones involves a man who saved a helpless sea creature, uh, to whom Watatsumi then sends a sea turtle carrying a small gift box. You know, as a, as a thank you gift. Thank you for saving my little sea creature. Uh, but the box contains time, somehow. And when the man opens it up, he instantly grows old. And the myth is really similar overall to, you know, like uh, Pandora's box. It's like a forbidden thing. Anyway, uh, the second myth that he's, you know, really well known for is when Watatsumi sends a sea turtle again to fetch a monkey because Watatsumi needed the monkey's liver. For what I don't know, don't ask me. But the Kurage... The jellyfish warned the monkey about this, and the monkey escaped. So Watatsumi was really angry with the jellyfish and punished it, and that's supposedly why jellyfish have no shells or bones. 
Anyway, uh, <laughs> you probably noticed where I'm going with this, but cocoa meat is totally themed around jellyfish. So why would someone Watatsumi punished in a myth be the one to inherit his will? And is there a possible link between something Kokomi did with good intentions that had severe consequences? For example, was a box of time, so to speak, once gifted to the Raiden Shogun in good faith, only to have it make her really angry? Okay, so the uh, second thing I wanted to touch on here is the idea of peace talks. This is the first time I'm hearing of any time of diplomacy, at least that I remember. And it's obviously not going to end well. It doesn't even end well in the trailer. It's, you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to take a guess and say that Sarah probably offered the peace talks with honorable intentions because that's in line with what we've seen of her character so far. However, I don't think Sarah knows that the peace talks are likely a diversion of sorts. I think this is how she... I don't want to say betrays Ball, but like how she changes her mind about what she's been doing thus far. The way people charge in here as they please. So uncivilized. Signora's the one behind all this? Ugh, not her again! Have you learned your lesson now? The way you follow me around like a dark shadow you know i know i've mentioned the idea that senora is the moth constellation before on the fatui harbinger constellation wheel but i didn't exactly expect to get this kind of confirmation i was uh mostly basing those assumptions on her mask and the idea that scaramouche is likely the doll and a popular theory that suggested senora as being the crimson witch of flames as well as this Pale Flame Stainless Bloom, and neither of those two latter theories are mine, like, at all. I, I did not come up with those. It's just something I agree with. Uh, is, <laughs> that was completely unexpected, but whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Just a second. Is that Ball watching Senora fight us? Excuse me, what the heck? I literally have nothing to add here. I'm just really confused. I have no idea how this is going to pan out. Just wanted to point out the little figure in the background. Anyway. <laughs> Not even ashes will remain. Let's get them. Protect Madame Cujo. And I will do everything within my power to defend my family's honor. Storm the front. Cujo scum! Colluding with the Fatui isn't low enough for you already! Yeah, okay. Like I said, I don't think Sara really understands some of the things that are going on behind the curtain, so to speak. Uh, the war in general does appear to have been instigated in some ways by the Fatui, although the extent to which I'm not really sure. They could just be stirring a pot that was already boiling. You know what I mean? I do think that the peace talks we mentioned earlier happen after this scene, though. It's likely that Sara offered a truce of sorts, but then the Fatui involvement was discovered during the talks themselves, which I'm guessing would then spur on more fighting, and I think the whole aging thing is more of an ongoing problem is not directly related to the peace talks, even though they're kind of mentioned together. Just my take on it. You just want to take everything away from us! To survive hardship, you must prepare for hardship. Some ambitions have the power to heal wounds, to bring victory. I don't think any of us expected Kazuha to make a comeback in the story, <laughs> but I'm really glad he's here. My next Big Theory video has some ideas about Masterless Visions reawakening, and I think from this I'm going to find that one of those two theories I'm posing is actually correct. Uh, the Masterless Vision here does start to flash violet, so I think by facing Ball, Kazuha is, in a way, trying to fulfill his friend's ambition. I also think that's part of what Yai is trying to tell us here with her cryptic riddles. Indulge my curiosity. What is the reason that I find you standing here before me once again? Surely 
You don't think your ambition alone is enough to shake A's will, do you? Yeah, okay, this. This right here. This is the big thing I wanted to talk about, and the reason I'm not convinced anymore that Yai is an antagonist in this part of the story, or a puppet master, or that she's possessing Ball. I don't think any of those is the case. Not, like, literally possessing Ball. Anyway, okay. Here's what I am thinking, though. I'm thinking that Kazuha might lose his friend's vision in a duel with Ball, and that vision then takes the place of the 100th vision that was supposed to be Toma's, which would then allow Ball to start calling upon the statue's power for whatever it is that she's trying to do with the statue, because we still don't really know. Like, yeah, implement eternity, but, like, how? What's it doing? I don't know. Anyway, here's the thing. I don't think we're actually seeing Ball activate this tower statue thing in this trailer. Look at the way these visions light up. They're lighting up with golden light. The same golden light envelops us, the Traveler, as we confront Ball within her domain for a second time. I think Yai is actually literally telling us that our will alone is not enough to overcome Balls. I think she's flat out telling us that we need the power of friendship and love and of, you know, well, everyone's combined wishes and ambitions in order to properly confront Ball on equal footing. I think that golden light is the Traveler resonating with all of the wills within those visions, effectively turning Ball's so-called weapon against her. Also, Yai just told us Ball's name. Straight up. It's A, as in E-I, which is funny in two ways, because the kanji used for it is read as shadow, but the reading of it, A, means eternal in Japanese. And because she's the Raiden Shogun, she's also kind of obviously based on Honkai Impact's Raiden Mei. You got Mei and A, and it's real subtle, isn't it? That's it. Just like that. Eternity stretches things out over a long time. But each moment within it becomes all the more fragile. <laughs> And there he is, my little flat earth gremlin. Now, this is kind of a hot take because we haven't seen this kid in well over 250 days and I shouldn't call him a kid because I'm estimating he's well over 500 years old. Anyway, I have some new thoughts as to his role here. Nothing that contradicts too much of what I've already said in previous theory videos, but I digress. Now. I think Scaramouche is likely the primary puppet master here, and I think he might be playing both sides for different reasons. And by both sides, I think he's tricking Senora in the same way Senora misled Child back when they were both going after Zhongli's Gnosis. I really think he has some beef with Ball that he wants to handle himself. And I'm kind of convinced at this point that Scaramouche is going to successfully capture us, the Traveler, and Yai is going to be the one to rescue us, which would put this scene right before the scene at the very beginning of this promotional trailer where Yai is trying to wake us up. Okay, you with me? Now, I've seen a couple of people say that this purple smoke might be a poison, but I'm actually wondering if it's not something similar to like the violet miasma that we see during the We Will Be Reunited quest in the domain with Venti's upside down statue. I'm also wondering if it's at all connected to the Archon residue that was mentioned in the comic. You know, it's it's that stuff that Dottore injected Kolei with. Because the smokes are kind of similar. Well, regardless, I don't think this smoke is related to any of Scaramouche's specific powers. Unless he really is Animo, and he's going to have purple swirls instead of green. Because that would be sick. Anywho, there's also Crystal Marrow in the background here. Which is pretty odd, given that it's the very first thing we deal with when we get to Inazuma. And that's also the stuff that grows on Orobashi's bones. So what are we doing with Orobashi's toxic bone marrow? 
I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, uh, there's also this really suspicious screenshot they showed. Do you notice anything odd? Because there's a friggin' delusion in the upper right-hand corner. Like, what's up with that? And I think that delusion might be in this one weird statue that looks like something out of these funky murals we're seeing in some of these Inazuma domains. And, like, who exactly is he talking to during this little screenshot clip audio segment? Who is he calling weak? Is it the Traveler? Is it Ball? Is it Senora? Because the one thing that bothers me is that we never actually physically challenged Scaramouche back in Unreconciled Stars way back when, you know? So I'm not sure how he effectively gauged our strength to then call us weak. He has to have a baseline from somewhere, so that begs the question, from where? I'm not sure. Hmm. Food for thought. But that's all I have for you guys from this trailer, besides a whole lot of hype! I cannot wait to hear what you guys think so far of how 2.1 looks! I am super excited! Two brand new islands to explore, more story, more lore. I am just a happy little pineapple. But hey, if you guys got anything to add or notice anything I missed, let me know down in the comments below. I am just, like, hungry for crumbs at this point. <laughs> We need more lore. Anywho, I'm currently working on a bigger two-part video project that I cannot wait to share. So I do hope to see you guys soon in that video. But in the meantime, take care, travelers. We'll see you next time.